Hello and welcome back to Shadel VR Creates Code Block Scripting Tutorials for Meta Horizon Worlds. In this video, we're going to focus on creating a simple game start countdown timer. We will ensure that the countdown timer will only activate if there are multiple players in the activation trigger, making it a very useful tool for multiplayer games. In Meta Horizon Worlds, the send event with delay and cancel sending event with delay code blocks are powerful tools for creating dynamic gameplay features. One such use case is to create a countdown timer that runs a loop every second and decreases a variable value by one for each loop. This can create a sense of urgency and excitement in gameplay experience. To activate the countdown timer, we can use another variable that tracks the number of players inside the trigger. Once the variable meets a specified threshold, we can use the send event with delay code block to start the countdown timer loop. If a player leaves the trigger and the number of players inside becomes less than the specified threshold, we can use the cancel sending event with delay code block to stop the countdown timer loop. By utilizing these code blocks in Meta Horizon Worlds, we can create engaging and dynamic gameplay experiences that keep players coming back for more. Let's jump into Meta Horizon Worlds and take a look at an example. Okay, here we are in Meta Horizon Worlds. I have already pulled out a trigger gizmo and I've put a reference block right below it so that we can find it when we are in preview mode. I've also pulled out a text box gizmo and with me I have my two puppet characters, if you will, to help with testing. So let's go get a code block script and let's name this script our countdown timer and our countdown timer script will need a handful of variables we will need one for that text box gizmo down there that will be our display we will need a player count number variable to keep track of how many players are inside of the trigger. We need a current count variable. I'm going to create a default length number variable and set it to five. This is actually, I'm going to set it to 10. This is going to be our 10 second timer. And the last thing that we need is our threshold minimum number of players required to be inside of our player count in order to start the game. And I'm going to set mine to two. <clears throat> now, the first thing I want to do when the world starts is set my current count to my default length. We will use a couple of player events in this example when trigger is entered by player and when trigger is exited by player. When the player enters the trigger, we're going to add one to our player count. And we're going to send an event to start a loop. Now, I'm going to do all of my logic inside of my loop since this is such a small project. But you may not want to do that in your particular case. Here, I'm just going to call the loop tick. And then we can create an event. So when event tick is received. We can create a one second tick loop by using the send 
event after a delay code block. Sorry, send event with delay code block. <clears throat> now this will create an infinite loop, so we need to put some logic in here. The first thing inside of that loop that I want to happen is to display a default string on the display. And this is simply going to say, need more players. Our first logic check will be to check if there are enough players inside of the player count variable. So if player count is greater than or equal to my threshold, my minimum players of two, Let's continue updating the display. This time we're going to display count, the current count on the display. Our next logic check will be to make sure that the count, the current count is above zero. So if current count is greater than zero, let's subtract one from the current count and send the tick event after the delay. Now, if current count is equal to zero, so else current count is not greater than zero, I would recommend disabling this trigger because we are done with it for the moment. And you would send your start game event to your game manager. Now we have one more check to finish and it, that is if the if a player exits the trigger before the countdown has expired. So if player count becomes less than minimum players, so else player count is not greater than or equal to our minimum players, let's simply reset the current count back to our default length. And the loop will not have executed because we did not succeed on this if gate. And, and, our, and our loop is contained inside of that if gate. A couple more things we need to do. When a trigger is exited by the player, we need to subtract a player from our player count. Currently, the way this is written, should a third or a fourth player enter the trigger, we will end up with multiple tick loops happening all at the same time, which will cause the countdown to decrease very quickly. To avoid that, we need to cancel the first tick loop that was running. So when a player enters this trigger, let's cancel that original tick. 
loop. Cancel sending event to self. So now that original loop from the first two players that were in that trigger has stopped. Let's set our current count back to our default to reset our count back to 10 in this instance. And then let's start a new loop, a new tick. 10, 9, 8. That way, if another player now enters the trigger, that tick that's running will stop and a new tick will take over. That way, we never have more than one tick loop operating at any given time. Okay, that should be it for the script. Let's uh, go wire up our objects. The trigger gets the countdown timer script. The display gets wired to the trigger. Now, when I enter the world, and if I have Shadel XR enter the trigger first, you can see we need more players. Now, if I have Shadel AR enter the trigger, our timer will start. If either one of these players exits, the trigger will reset. And if a third or fourth player enter, the trigger will go back to the default, allowing more time for additional players to enter. And then when we let the timer expire, that will disable the trigger that we are standing in, effectively disabling the countdown, and now your game can start. Hi, welcome back. And there you have it, a simple yet effective countdown timer for multiplayer games using code block scripting in Meta Horizon Worlds. Thank you for watching this Horizon Worlds scripting tutorial, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials like this. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more Horizon Worlds scripting tutorials, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to support me, you can check out my Patreon page linked in the description below. Also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more updates. All of my social media accounts are also linked in the video description. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye!